Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, joining in and welcome to the topic machine learning models for eavesdropping on other models for better learning. So, uh, thank you, Alma, for the introduction. Uh, let's quickly dive into uh, this today's talk. So let me just quickly glide over the contents of the things that we'll be covering. Uh, so mainly we will try to question uh, how uh, easy, you know, um, uh, we'll try to get, build an intuition or, or uh, you know, how uh, we can relate human learning with uh, machine learning. We'll try to see how multitask learning actually came into being from ensemble learning. Then we'll try to understand uh, deeper concepts of multitask learning, the advantages, how to train them, how to train, with, train them with multiple data sets, how to handle multiple losses, et cetera. And uh, I think there'll be a lot of questions in this part of the presentation uh, because we'll not be going over the math, uh, but an example towards the end will, should be covering most of your doubts, right? So I would suggest to keep the questions towards the end so that most of the questions, all these topics which we cover here uh, is, will be there in this example. Right. So let's quickly look into the motivations. So what motivates us to actually learn, uh, you know, to, to have uh, multitask learning? So the first thing is, you know, we, in this slide, we try to understand uh, how, uh, you know, a human learning is related to uh, model learning, right? So biologically speaking, we can say, uh, we can view uh, model eavesdropping with human learning at, at two levels. The first way is the way we interpret uh, certain concepts. Right. So what, what do I mean by certain concepts? It basically means uh, consider yourself in science class, right? You and your friend struggle to understand different co concepts, right? You may understand certain concepts better while your friend is struggling with other, but he might learn some other concepts better, right? And the second is the, just the way we learn, right? Some of you might require some diagrams. Some of you might need more examples to learn, right? So we can relate this multiple concepts to multiple features in the given data set. And we can relate the way we learn to underlying model architecture, or just you know just learn the uh, just learn with more data, right? So you, the best way to actually boost the way you score marks or you know and uh, uh, you know uh, learn better would be to interact with your colleagues and share knowledge, right? Or you can be with like you know like Mr. Bean who just tries to peep into others' answer during exam, right? So one of the key takeaways that you can have. I know in, from this slide would be uh, different model architectures learn different concepts with a different ease, right? So now let's quickly try to have a brief idea of what ensemble model uh, ensemble learning is, right? So here I have a, a simple representation of a, a convolution neural network where we have a simple input convolution layers followed by a fully connected layer and an output layer. Well, an ensemble model may have a common input but there are multiple models. You can consider these multiple models as uh, you know, models uh, as in like critiques, right? Each model may be good at some, uh, you know, under, uh, extracting some feature, right? So at the end, what happens is uh, the model which is good in extracting certain features, right? That gets an extra vote. That has a more say in the final output that we get. That is ensemble modeling. Right. So one of the specific things that I want to highlight or one of the specific techniques that I want to bring to notice is the bagging approach. Right. So in bagging approach, what you do is you have an original data set, a complete data set, and you create many subsets of this original data set. So here in this uh, diagram, we have five data sets, uh, five subsets of the original data set. And this subset are unique. There, there are no duplicates among them. Right. So, and you have five different models here as an example. So each of these models get a subset of this data for training. So what happens is there'll be a parallel training of all these five models with, this, uh, with, with all these subset of data. So what uh, at the end, what happens is all these models outputs are averaged or voted, or you can have many other weighting techniques from which you get a combined final output. So uh, what you can notice here is uh, this model one architecture might be different from the model five architecture. So model one may be good at extracting some features, uh, uh, which is there in you know uh, subset five, right? But the model one never sees subset five, or model two never sees subset four or five, right? And the models here don't interact with each other to share data. Right? As I earlier said, it's best that uh, you know we share knowledge with your friends to better learn, right? Or you can copy or you can share knowledge. 
So, the, so you know, you can see that this this advantage of having multiple models, but the model is not. Uh, we don't know which data set should go to which model, right? So, this is one of a drawback in this ensemble learning, right? In this specific bagging approach. So, this is where you know we have the concept of multitask learning, right? So, multitask learning is uh, basically involves uh, combining multiple related tasks. So what do I mean by related tasks? So tasks can be a separate uh, different model it's models itself, right? So there can be n number of models. You can combine them uh, to have one huge common model, right? So uh, we'll get into more specifics of the tasks. Let's just try to imagine them as uh, different models, right? A simple, uh, smaller versions of different models. And there is a common feature extracted for these different tasks that we have, right? So what happens is, uh, as a common feature extractor is present, we share the different representations of the data uh, with all the related tasks. So what happens is there's a lot of knowledge sharing and also a lot of data generalization in, in this process. So this approach is called multitask learning, right? So when do we actually use this multitask learning? Right? So there is, uh, so there is uh, you know, imagine a situation, there is a lot of scarcity of data. But there is a lot of other relevant data that you can use, which belong to the same domain, right? So that can be used with multitask learning, right? And another uh, uh, scenario where you can have is combining related tasks to give one lightweight model, right? So this, uh, instead of having multiple huge models, you can have one common feature extractor with the smaller tasks which can do the job, right? And also there can be a, situ a situation where there is sufficient data, you have sufficient data, but a single task, a simple convolution neural network approach would not give a good uh, result because you know, supervised learning performs best when you have a lot of data, right? So you can boost the learning uh, using additional data sets, which I will talk about more uh, soon. So this, all these scenarios you can uh, cover using multitask learning, right? So going to uh, so some of the common ways to perform multitask learning. So there are two common ways, that is soft parameter sharing and hard parameter sharing. So from now, henceforth, uh, in our discussion, right, in this talk, consider each of the task A, task B, and task, B, uh, task C as uh, three different persons trying to learn something, right? So that way, we will try to build an intuition around that as well, right, the human learning, right? So in soft parameter sharing, you can see that there are three different models here. Uh, Right? So it, these models can be a different in architecture or they can be seen. There's no uh, constraint on that. But there are three different models. Right? So each of these layers, you can see, uh, uh, you know, so, so each of these tasks, as I said earlier, can be completely different tasks. It may be segmentation tasks. It may be classification tasks. Uh, but, the, 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 but the data that they're using is of, of some relevance and they come from a similar distribution. Right? And you can see that there is a, some, some kind of a relation that's happening between the layers. Right? So what, what is this is some parameters in task, uh, in this layer in task A can be made similar to that parameter in task B model. So this relation can be uh, set up and you know you can have make these parameters same. So that you know basically what's happening in task A parameter is similar to task B parameter. So this way you can have knowledge sharing across models in soft parameter. Another common approach is the hard parameter sharing. Most people you see uh, in industry use this approach over uh, 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 soft, soft parameter sharing. Because soft parameter sharing, you must have guessed by now that you know uses a lot of memory in this case, right? So hard parameter sharing is ha you have uh, you know, one common feature extractor. This is the feature extractor I was talking about, where you know uh, all the model learning is present here. And all the model learning, so the model have to will have to learn in such a way that it has to give a best performance for task A, task B, and for task C, right? So basically, what happens is as you pass different data sets for for each of the tasks, right? So each of the data sets are related to those specific tasks. So the representation is is so generalized that each of the task is benefiting from the data from the other task. So this is hard parameter sharing. So you can see this as you know uh, this uh, shared layer as uh, only one copy exists in the computer memory, and that is shared across different tasks, right? 
So we'll get to what task is soon. So a complete machine learning point of view would be uh, multitask learning. Uh, you know, we can see multitask learning as a form of inductive transfer. So what I mean by inductive transfer is uh, uh, transfer of knowledge, right? Uh, so this is very similar to uh, transfer learning, I would say. Uh, but uh, transfer learning would be freezing the network, right? And then training the last few layers that you add. But here you actually transfer the knowledge directly rather than freezing any layers, right? So, uh, so inductive transfer can help improve a model by introducing some inductive bias. So when I say a bias, please don't be alarmed. So this bias is something good which happens in multitask learning. So if I just have to revisit like, this slide again, you can see, uh, you know, as I said earlier, so this common feature extractor will have parameters such that it should benefit both task A and task B, right? So some parameters within this uh, set of layers you can see are creating some kind of bias for task A, right? So, and some, bi some uh, bias, inductive bias for task B and for task C. So this way, the bias is actually helping the task specific performance, right? So that is the ML machine learning part of view of multitask learning. So going to some of the advantages of using multitask learning, right? So again, uh, just uh, you know, try to consider the two tasks, task A, task B, and task C as three different persons trying to learn something. So in the following example as well, you know, the advantages which we are going to discuss consider the same, and we'll try to have uh, you know uh, discuss more on the hard parameter sharing technique, right? So the first very really, first um, uh, advantage is, we get is the implicit data augmentation. So commonly, if you have a shortage of data, what you do is to generalize the model better. You do data augmentation. Maybe you change the uh, change the images by a certain degree, uh, you know, or you know, uh, you try to uh, rotate the image or flip the image, or maybe add some noise to it. So all these are data augmentation, right? So but in multitask learning, you could have that. But the real magic of multitask learning comes out when you use multiple data sets all together to train the model, right? So we know that in simple CNN, you would consider have training a simple single task. So that data will have uh, simple, it will it'll have a noise patterns of its own and the model will have to generalize, uh, discriminate, you know, I mean, discriminate the uh, noise patterns with the uh, relevant uh, features of interest, right? So what you can do, what multitask learning does uh, is to jointly train two tasks. So what happens is you, you consider two, two different data sets. One data set is for task A, another data set is for task, C, uh, task B. In this process, the model I'll have to generalize across the two tasks. And in the process, it also uh, prevents overfitting, right? So what, as I said, the task A can refer to some of the features of task B. So this is again, you know, uh, uh, adding additional uh, data to the model learning. That's what I wanted to say in this. And the next is the eavesdropping. That's the main uh, thing concept that we want to discuss here. So in eavesdropping, consider some set of features that needs to be learned, some features F that need to be learned in some specific data, right, for some task A. So, so the so the task A might you know uh, actually easily learn these features for this data, but it might be difficult for another task B, right? So you, you try to recall the diagram of hard parameter sharing here, so it, so that you know it becomes uh, you know easy to understand. So it, you know it it might become difficult for task B to extract those features. So this could be because you know task B uh, is trying to extract features in a complex way, or you know the more the architecture there is not. Uh, effective enough, or the features, you know, uh, you know, or the, or the just there is too much noise in the data, and it's not able to extract the relevant features. It's basically impeding the uh, model's ability, basically task B's ability to learn the feature set F, right? So through multitask learning, you can allow model to eavesdrop, that is, learn the feature F through task A. So basically, task B is trying to uh, peep into uh, task A for uh, some of the parameters, uh, you know, to, sh to, to knowledge, sharing of knowledge. That's what is happening here. And uh, so next advantage would be representation bias. So representation bias is very similar to, uh, I would say, the inductive bias. Uh, you know, uh, so, so the representation bias helps in creating specific, for task-specific performance, this is most useful. 
and overall yes it creates more uh, you know model model generalization of the data input and next we have the attention mechanism so this is not the uh, uh, the attention mechanism we talk in other computer vision problem this attention mechanism is slightly more relevant to uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, inductive uh, bias okay uh, so in certain cases you know uh, there may be very limited amount of data uh, and there and that might be too noisy as well right so it may it might make it harder for the model to differentiate between what are the relevant features and what are the irrelevant features right so in this case uh, multitask learning uh, focuses uh, model attention right by creating some set of uh, 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 inductive bias you know you can, it can cre it creates some kind of an attention towards certain set of features in the uh, uh, feature, uh, common feature extractor which is helpful for a particular task so basically uh, uh, it comes into play when you having multiple data sets and also with uh, uh, you know uh, with, with 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 different tasks right so that is what is happening with the attention mechanism it's very closely related to inductive bias right so with all these advantages we saw some of the hard parameter sharing the different base uh, you know the different types we can implement them some of the advantages and when we can use use multitask learning right so let's look at how we can actually train the model and also what is the basic structure of multitask learning so here in this slide i'm talking more about uh, task specific routing so what is task specific routing um, we'll get to that soon uh, what uh, you can see in this diagram uh, you know i have i'm considering three different data sets data set 1 data set 2 and data set 3 and each of the data sets are of different sizes right they're not even of same uh, sizes right so the uh, training you have to start considering you know some of these data set might exhaust early during the training process some of them might last a very long like some of these samples maybe data set one has only 100 samples while data set 3 has over 100000 samples right you have to take care of, of the batch size uh, and also you know uh, how to train how to give the input to the model right so we'll get to that very soon in the next slide so what's happening here is to give you a structure a structural idea uh, so we have one palm feature extractor uh, uh, there are a set of convolution layers here and this convolution layer this common feature extractor has a separate learning rate of its own and i'm considering three different tasks because i have three different data sets right and before the final output layer of the tasks i have i have i may have a convolution layer i have i may have a uh, a fully connected layer right and each of these uh, convolution uh, or fully connected layer have its own learning rate so there are multiple learning rates happening over here right and also if you see there is a routing mechanism uh, before the input and just between the interface of common feature extractor and different tasks right so this routing mechanism is basically ensuring which data set has to go to which task and there are uh, some use use uh, specific use cases we'll uh, we'll discuss now so what happens is uh, when you uh, during a forward pass right so the forward pass can actually take place in three different ways so the first very first way is a sequential uh, training technique so wherein uh, you know the data set 1 is routed to only to task 1 the data set is routed only to task 1 but never to task two or three. So it's always routed to task one, and you calculate the loss, right? And after calculating the loss, you may have n number of uh, no output class, uh, you know, two layer, uh, uh, two output class, or uh, no multi class output. It doesn't matter. You calculate the loss, and then you back propagate. You optimize all the parameters here. And this uh, after uh, after doing that, you pass in the data to data set two to task two, optimize and calculate the loss and uh, back propagate. The same thing happens for task three, but this is a very sequential approach, and the disadvantage of this approach is the uh, since we uh, you know we back propagated the last, uh, we optimized the weights for the task data set three last, the model is slightly more biased to this data set, right? So it is biased to this task, right? So how do we do parallel training? So in parallel training, the route what the routing uh, routing does is it uh, routing mechanism does is it. Uh, it sends the data set one to task one, calculates the loss and holds it, and task and then task two data set is routed to task two, the loss is calculated again, and similar thing happens for task three. 
once all the three task uh, task losses are calculated they are all combined together uh, that is there that is there summed up and then back propagated all at once so at at the junction where you know back propagation of these all the three task happens again it's all summed up and then back propagated right so in this way you can achieve uh, a parallel training of uh, multitask learning another specific use case of routing mechanism is you can assign some set of probability for uh, uh, for different data sets so what i mean by that is you may want to have data set 1 uh, you know uh, or task 1 specifically speaking to uh, you know optimize these uh, parameters or weights more often than data set 2 or data set 3 right so in this in that way you want to create some extra bias for task 1 right or maybe for task 2 so by assigning some set of uh, probabilities right uh, or some randomness you can have the routing mechanism set up so in this way you you would actually try to uh, train uh, seri uh, serially parallelly or you know uh, by assigning probability right so this is like how you can uh, do the forward pass and do the backward pass so uh, i have basically covered the same contents in this slide in the uh, you know in the previous slide as well so what i want to highlight here is you know the smallest data set might exhaust very early during this training phase so you'll have to uh, be very considerate to give the batch size of that data set uh, because you, you you wouldn't want to uh, you basically would want to calculate the ratios of uh, you know the smallest to the largest data set and then decide on the batch size because either the model will end up seeing very few samples of a particular data set and too many samples uh, of a data data set of uh, having a very large size so in pytorch what uh, i'm usually a pytorch follower so uh, i what i what i did uh, within my implementation is uh, the data loader which i created so basically if you have three data sets you'll have to have three different data loaders obviously uh, so i created the data loader variable uh, made the data loader variable as iterable right so once it's iterable outside the main training loop so inside the main training loop i use the next method Uh, to get the next set of samples so in this way uh, you wouldn't face any hurdle that you know the smallest uh, set would exhaust or the largest set would uh, you know uh, would conflict because the data set size actually matters a lot here so using this uh, iter and next method we simply solve that issue and as i said earlier you know there are three different ways to do the forward pass uh, i also mentioned you know you can have you combine all the three different losses in parallel training right so here you can see total loss as model loss uh, that is x1 l1 plus x2 l2 plus x3 uh, into uh, uh, x3 into l3 right so x x1 x2 and x3 are some set of constants so this constants actually play can play quite a bit of role here because uh, you can penalize a certain loss to a more degree right so this way you can control uh, start giving more importance to what loss is to be more focused on you can create some you know give some constant like some you know it varies uh, you know less than 0 uh, to 1 you can you can give that range and try to control what should be the loss which loss should be given more importance to and you know you might try considering uh, training this parallelly this uh, you know it's uh, not parallelly putting this uh, task in different gpus for uh, parallelly you know train the model but that actually doesn't work because some of these tasks uh, you know might take more time uh, you know uh, to actually give out the output so it's best you follow this approach that is parallel training but not in different gpus on a single gpu training is much much better and one more thing experimentally it's been found that um, having a small learning rate for the main feature extractor is very useful and a slightly slightly high learning rate for the tasks so one common issue that's uh, you know is found with multitask learning uh, is what we want to discuss here so we understand that as we traverse deeper into the network we transition from some general features to very specific features right so uh, it it's, it's it's common for all the deep learning models right so one of the fundamental problem that arises is how related these two tasks are because uh, you know uh, we have to make sure that the, the common feature extractor is sending exactly those parameters those features 
to those specific tasks right if the tasks actually receive a different uh, parameters that is not uh, you know uh, not actually of any relevance to it then that's something called negative transfer so that's basically trying to mess up the model uh, it, it would basically mess up your model or it would you know uh, try to unlearn the task itself right so then actually the remaining tasks also might be affected because you're trying to combine all the losses and then back propagating right so one way uh, there is no, not actually a clear way you can find out how these tasks are related but some of the uh, researchers actually have tried to uh, you know find ways so one one up, uh, up, approach they have tried is using clustering algorithm uh, you know trying to see how similar these two data sets are and then applying uh, this tech, uh, this multitask learning or you know uh, you can actually study the uh, features you can manually you know go into the data set try to uh, investigate how closely the features among different data sets are related and then go for multitask learning right so next going into uh, one real time example so you learned a lot of concept the advantages uh, and when they are used right so the specific answer that you're looking for what what related tasks are and how relevant the data set should be i think this example is perfect so this is a paper recently published on uh, uh, on uh, detecting covid-19 uh, and pneumonia so what the aim of the uh, paper is to classify and segment some regions uh, uh, right uh, uh, as into covid-19 and others uh, and you know and you know try to give uh, this as a solution to doctors right so they are doing this using uh, ct scan chest ct scans so if you're fairly new to medical domain you know this is how a chest uh, i mean the uh, chest ct scan looks like from top so here this is the right lung and this is the left lung right so one of the issues that is you know you must have guessed by now is the very limited labeled and annotated covid-19 ct scans right so we need to uh, act quickly to provide a solution with very limited data right so if i actually uh, you know person who is not aware of multitask learning would di directly take some annotated data of or you know labeled data of covid-19 and would train a simple convolutional neural network and give out the result right but now we know multitask learning right so we can use other data sets of which have similar uh, relevance right similar features Right, that that might help boost our models learning, right? So in this paper, what the authors have done is try to uh, use, uh, try to gather uh, data set from different sources, right? So they try to gather data from uh, hospital, uh, hospital, uh, hospital in France. Uh, that is, uh, they try to collect data such like. Um, so here you can see uh, K lung, right? So this is basically uh, the CT scans. having uh, uh, ct scans of patients having lung cancer so there are 98 samples of them and there are ct scans of normal patients that is patients who do not have any kind of diseases no lung diseases no covid-19 no symptoms of whatsoever so those are 425 samples right and another open source uh, available ct scans they are also they are found so here in one of these open source they, they data set they found non covid samples but the multi class pathology so these patients these ct scans uh, are non covid but they are suffering from pleural effusion and uh, some other diseases uh, in uh, you know that are there uh, like edema pleural effusions consolidation so these are some of the uh, diseases which the person is suffering from so there are multi pathologies also but they are non covid right so that's something to be taken note of and there are also covid 19 Uh, labeled data set that is of 349 samples and also one more data set source they found was for ct scan was this this 100 samples of covid in patient is not only ground truth labeled but also annotated annotated in the sense like the radiologist has manually marked this region of the lung is you know having covid 19 or this region has you know is is having covid 19 right so these annotations actually uh, to help uh, uh, to a great extent uh, we'll we'll get to uh, get to that soon once we have a look at the model right and just to give an idea uh, you know how diverse the data set is although this is the ct scans of patients 
So each of the data set they have collected is of different formats because you know PNG and JPG uh, images have different compression ratios and the way the compressions are done is different, right? So very minute features. So these are some of the samples of patients suffering from COVID-19, right? Imagine, you know, having some compression, uh, you know, uh, how those features might be affected, right? The, you might lose a lot of features uh, just by the formats of the data. And, you know, there are uh, formats of NIFT, Nifty type, there are DICOM images of very high quality images, uh, you know, of uh, CT scans. And, you know, on and all these, uh, all these CT scans are of different sizes as well. And some of these CT scans, you know, have a lot of noise here. Some of them are very, uh, you know, are very centric to the lung alone. See, all these are just variations and the model should be able to understand which is a specific lung region and where the COVID-19 needs to be present, right? Um, so that is the about the data set, right? So the so since we have all these data sets, n number of the four five data sets, we can try to you combine them into a multitask learning model. So what they propose is uh, this is the uh, model architecture that they're proposing. So this is not so uh, this is not surprising to us because we already seen the structure basic structure of multitask learning. We have a common feature extractor here, and three different tasks. The first task is a reconstruction task. The second task is a segmentation task. Third is a classification task, right? So in classification task, if you see, let's go from bottom to up. So in classification tasks, they have grouped the data, uh, output class as COVID-19, normal, and others. So the others can be persons suffering from any, any disease, right? So let's say some, uh, some input is given, some uh, patient, CT scan is given as input and he's suffering from some disease, right? Uh, some lung disease, but not COVID, right? Uh, so, so that lung abnorm abnormality needs to be classified as others. It should not be classified as COVID-19. So you see there is a specific path, right? So for COVID-19, there's a specific path that has been created. So this is the main idea of, uh, you know, your the main idea of this paper was to solve that problem, right? How to predict, get accurate predictions for COVID-19, right? And then we have the segmentation task. So how is this task actually helping the model? As I said earlier, this set of data set, these 100 samples also have specific uh, annotations that is the region where COVID-19 is existing, right? So uh, what, what's happening is during the training phase, the model is trying to segment or, you know, trying to set the features of the common feature extractor such a way that you know the model is trying to focus only within the lung region so you know it would be like you know ignoring all these other regions but only looking at some marked regions some marked regions within the uh, within the ct scans so that's how segmentation task is actually helping this model and the reconstruction task right so reconstruction task actually doesn't have a, uh, have a real uh, application here but what uh, how it's helping the model is that um, you know some of the features here uh, you know might get distorted during the training so you know just to have uh, you know to make sure these latent representation that's there that's the hidden features right are you can use that features to reconstruct the uh, original uh, you know uh, ct scan right so you are actually even uh, doing segmentation here so there might be some loss of information Right, some of the other parts of the lung also might uh, might go, and also you're also considering the cases where other diseases are also there, right? So all those noise and all those you know the original image should be able to be reproduced, right? So in that case, they're, they're using reconstruction. So this basically acts as an auxiliary task, but there's no actual use of it, right? So this is how they have used uh, multitask learning in this case. But what about the results? How are they, how good are the results compared to uh, other models, right? So they did basically three levels of experiments. So the first experiment, you will be surprised. The first experiment is basically to understand which, uh, what are the combination of tasks that needs to be used to give the best performance. That is, you know, what combination of, uh, you know, these three tasks we have, which task, which combination of tasks gives the best result, right? So, and in that also they have a constraint, you know, of the image size, because as I said earlier, once you compress the image and reshape the image uh, to lower dimension, there is already loss of information, right? 
so they try to experiment in uh, in this experiment saying trying you know which uh, set of tasks uh, give the best output so what they have done is they found that the result for uh, combination of the current uh, you know segmentation task classification task and reconstruction task all the three task give uh, you know of uh, accuracy of 91% sensitivity and specificity of 84 and 99% right but when they consider uh, having a 256 by 256 size, uh, size image the actually the uh, the dice coefficient increased the accuracy have increased by 4% you can see here and there is also increase in sensitivity and specificity right so so that's about experiment 1 which which proves that you know that all the three tasks in learning in unison is much performing is giving much better results right so experiment 2 is specifically uh, for the segmentation task right so we know we, we, uh, the very popular unit architecture for segmentation right so these are the some of the standard uh, results that they have obtained uh, with the same data set how how much they get for using unit but when they considered with multitask learning uh, multitask learning they have seen increase over uh, you know you can see 11% increase in the dice coefficient you can see 95% increase in accuracy right so if you uh, actually have put down the result here the segmentation here you can see that uh, this is the original ct scan this is the ground truth that is actually marked by the radiologist uh, saying that this is the region where you know the covid 19 exists these are the regions of infections where covid 19 exists so this is the simple unit architecture trying to predict where the covid 19 patterns actually exist in the lung right and this is where uh, the, you know the arts is you know that is the multitask learning in combination of all the three tasks uh, uh, it's trying to predict where the covid 19 is present if you try to compare the ground truth with uh, prediction it's uh, you know the uh, it's very closely matching the Uh, ground truth which shows you know it's a proof that you know visually confirming that is the, the segmentations are very accurate compared to simple you know unit by itself and another experiment that uh, they conducted is a third experiment which you know simple uh, you know uh, simple classification uh, you know as i said earlier you know a person who does not know uh, multitask learning would use simple convolution neural network right so these are some of the simple uh, not simple these are some of the sota models that a popular industry like resnet vg16 alexnet right inception v3 from google all these are popular networks so when they once they actually start training individually for only for classification this is only for classification task right so you can see if only one model actually stands out that is the multitask learning they are actually getting a, a, a beating all the sota models actually when you have models in uh, you know combination of uh, all the three different tasks actually they you know they you know the models may be further enhanced you know if with more data uh, so that's the basic idea of multitask learning right so just revisiting here just showing the model again right so we have covered how this model actually you know this common feature representation is actually helping uh, and also the segmentation how the uh, it's enabling the model to look at look into uh, specific regions right so some of the recent approaches that are that are happening uh, over the uh, in multitask learning is like deep relational networks so we are very familiar with this uh, form of uh, uh, diagram you know multi linear relationships we have a set of uh, uh, tensor norm uh, parameters here so these tensor norms are nothing but multivariant normal distributions they are just a simple extension of multivariant normal distributions i wouldn't go too much into the math just giving an idea this is you know trying to uh, find the linear combinations of the different representation that are there and you know and then trying only if the you know uh, uh, you know the relationship between the representation if some representation here this feature is helpful for this task then only the sharing of knowledge happens right so this is again a uh, simple positive transfer right it directly helps prevent negative transfer then we have cross stitch networks so cross stitch networks are like uh, this is the best example of uh, soft parameter sharing where you have two different networks network a and network b and where there is a simple uh, cross stitch unit a zoomed version of cross stitch unit is here so these are nothing but uh, cross stitch units are like gates right they try to take the activations from the previous layer 
and you know, they they are here again it's all linear combinations uh, you know approach where you know uh, trying to understand if this activation is helping this model or the activation from this uh, you know ta task b helping uh, task a model right so these gates help in prevent negative transfer again right so this is one simple application of cross stitch networks so there are many approaches that you can definitely try out uh, you know in multitask learning Uh, uh but you know the the very basic network we saw that's like the first step that you need to be covering when you're trying multiple tasks multitask learning these are some of the latest uh, you know uh, things that are happening right now research work is happening uh so some of the references that you know i have added to this uh, ppt you know is quite useful i would say just walking you through some of them uh so most of the things you know papers that we discussed are all linked here Uh, there are like three of them that I would like to cite to you. Uh, would be how transferable uh, transferable are features in deep neural networks. So this paper is some they're quite you know interesting to look at. You know this basically talks about the task relationships that are there. And the other one is here again the NIPS uh, paper published NIPS. Uh, that is uh, NIPS conference uh, uh, learning multiple tasks with multilinear relationship networks. Here they they even give a lot of. Uh, uh proofs you know where negative transfers and how negative transfers can actually occur and the last one which i you know uh which i'm trying to you know which you should definitely check out is massively using multitask so when you have very huge number of tasks right how the model behave in such cases because uh, you know uh, uh just optimizing such a multi, uh, such a large network setting up the different learning rates might become challenging so this is a good example where they even give uh, this network this uh, sorry this paper you, you know mainly talks on drug discovery using multitask learning some interesting papers you know cited here uh, definitely you should look at yes i missed out this one learning higher order task relationships right this is also uh, more on the task relationships because you know it's very important to know what kind of uh, data that you need to consider uh, how relevant the data features uh, are across the data sets and how uh, closely uh, you know using the tasks uh, maybe help because the, the example we saw the authors actually had to dig into each of the uh, you know experiment you know uh, to understand which of the three which are the combinations of tasks actually give the best result right so, so do do check out these uh, references definitely helpful if you are interested in multitask learning definitely you know worth trying over a simple convolution neural network right so so that's it from my side um, thanks for attending this uh, session really uh, great to be here so any questions you guys have you know you can you know ask me now or you know you can post it on slack